This time, do yourself a favor and see Black Christmas. For its place in film history and for its effectiveness, it really deserves to be seen. Black Christmas is mostly famous for helping invent the slasher subgenre. In fact, nobody ever talks about this movie without mentioning that it predates Halloween. But Halloween is the one that everybody ripped off, with all of its innovations becoming cliches and all these bad holiday-themed movies of the 80s. So although Black Christmas was first, it still feels fresher than Halloween does. The story concerns a maniac killing people in a sorority house during Christmas break. After the first girl goes missing, most of the plot involves her friends trying to find out what happened to her as they one by one fall victim to the killer. It sounds like a cheap exploitation movie, and it is, in theory, but it's exceptionally well made and well acted. The director's Bob Clark of Porky's and A Christmas Story. He's one of those craftsman directors that just did a bunch of different kinds of movies, and you can tell in how confident and well crafted this thing is and the script is filled with characters that feel like real people, not just cliches that are waiting to get murdered. God damn you! You think it's my fault, don't you? You've been implying it all afternoon. Barb, you're drunk. Go to bed. And the cast is better than you'd expect, too. Margot Kidder, Andrea Martin, Keir Dulay, and John Saxon. It's really much more well-made than a Christmas-themed Canadian slasher movie ought to be. Some of the things that set it apart from other slasher movies. First, the killer doesn't actually stalk people. He sneaks into the house in the first scene and he pretty much stays there. We know he must have been in the front yard at some point, but that's about it. Also, we never learn anything about him. There's no backstory, no motive, no name, not even a face. And a big part of the story is that mystery as to who the killer is, so I guess I sort of spoiled the fun there. Also, the killer isn't this cold, emotionless killing machine that slowly walks around. He's an off-the-rails, manic pervert. Although you never actually see the killer do anything sexual to anybody, and it's not even really implied that he has, he makes up scene phone calls throughout the movie, and they're genuinely disturbing. does bring up another historical note. This film kicks off not one, but two phone-based plot devices. One, this is the first time the old urban legend twist of The caller is in the house. The calls are coming from the house. gets put on film. And that in itself is kind of weird because it's not used as a plot twist. The audience knows he's in the house the whole time. And two, as far as I can tell, this is the origin of the thing where the police say you have to keep the killer on the line for like 30 seconds or we can't trace the call. You're going to have to keep him on the line longer. You're not giving us enough time to get a trace. What's funny is that in this movie they actually explain that it's because the town has an old mechanical phone system that's considered out of date even in 1974. So it actually makes sense in this movie. But I still see this on TV sometimes now. It's really interesting to think how the next 10 years of horror movies would have went if this is the movie that everybody ripped off instead of Halloween. But as it is, it's still a well-made standalone horror movie, and it's a pretty nasty little piece of work. Check it out. The caller is in the house. 